Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the last episode, we learned about how to set up a camera and create perspective views. Today, in this episode, we are going to talk about walkthroughs. So last time, while we held a camera in our hand, today we are going to use a video camera. Let's begin. Okay, so this is the sample project that I have for which I want to create a walkthrough. Now, walkthrough would mean walking through a building holding a camera in your hand. But to, in order to walk, we need to know the path we are walking on. So let's go to the front of the floor plan views and think about how we want to walk around our building. So let's go to the view, 3D view, and you'll see a footstep sign, which is for the walkthrough. And now we are ready to create a path. So let's go ahead around our building over here and then gradually try to go inside our building from this door and look towards the staircase. Once you're finished, go to finish walkthrough. If you notice here in your project browser, you have a new view called walkthrough one. If you go to this view, you have an option of editing this walkthrough. Each walkthrough has 300 frames. Now let's go to the first frame here. Now this looks pretty blank to me. This is because the cameras are not yet set on that pathway. So let's go ahead and set up the camera. Let's go to the ground floor plan. If you don't see the path of your walkthrough, you can go to your project browser, check on the view that you have, right click and say show camera. Once you do that, you'll see the path that you've created. Let's go to the edit walkthrough. The first controls that you have here is active camera which means now we are ready to set up the camera on each of the points over here. So every single position that you have clicked in order to create your pathway has now converted itself into a keyframe. Now, the, now there are 300 frames, but only few keyframes. Every time we adjust the camera at the keyframes, intermediate frames are going to adjust automatically. Let's go ahead and edit our camera settings at each keyframe. So currently we are at frame number one, which is our first keyframe. And if you notice here, we have a camera set up, but it's looking at the wrong direction. So let's take this target position and change it towards here. This is the view depth. You can adjust how much that view is looking at, but I like to open my walkthrough and adjust this view depth. So let's go ahead and open the walkthrough and adjust the view depths at this particular frame number one. Now this crop region that you see here, the depths of your view is going to remain the same for all the 300 frames. Now all 300 frames. So let's go back to the ground floor and then go to the next keyframe and adjust the target position for that. So far we have adjusted for the first keyframe and the second one, but all the intermediate frames have automatically adjusted the targets. For example, if I go to the previous frame, you will see how it has taken the transition from the first keyframe to the second automatically. So what we need to do is go to the each next keyframe and adjust the camera position at those keyframes. So let's go ahead and maybe look over here. Next keyframe, look towards this small building over here. Next keyframe. You can always come back at any point of time in your walk through and adjust these camera positions. So we are going inside our building now, go to the next keyframe, look towards my staircase, next keyframe towards my staircase. And we are here. So let's open our walkthrough, go to the frame number one and check how it's going to play. Now, before playing, I usually like to go to every single next keyframe and check whether I have done this correctly or not, whether this view depth is enough for all the frames or not. So going gradually, slowly, when each next keyframe, it helps me adjust my walkthrough a little bit much better. And now we are going inside. Now, if, generally, if you're using an animation software, you have the ability to open a door, make people walk, make a car move. All of these kind of features are not available in Revit. So Revit walkthroughs are quite basic. If you are looking for a fast and easy way of visualizing your building design, um, Revit walkthroughs are quite helpful. But if you're looking for something, advanced tools to create your uh, visualization for marketing purposes where you want things to move, 
um, you might have to use a software which is specifically designed for animation. So in this particular case, to move inside a building, I would rather hide this door than go and bump into it. So I'm going to click outside for a minute to quit editing this walkthrough and select this particular door, right click, hide in view elements. So this way I don't bump into my door, but smoothly go inside the house. And let's go select the view depth, this crop region, edit walkthrough, and then go to the next keyframe. Everything looks okay. So let me go back to first keyframe and see how our walkthrough is going to play. So I'm going to hit the play button now. Looks to me quite okay. Perfect. You can always go ahead and change this visual style. You can also go into shaded mode or you can make it realistic. You can also export these uh, animations in these uh, kind of visual styles or you can also render this entire walkthrough and export this. So how do we export our animation? Once you have completed creating your walkthrough, go to the file, export, all the way down in this arrow, you have images and animation. Click on the walkthrough. So now you can set up how you want your exported animation to look like. Do you want to export all 300 frames or you only want some of these frames to be exported? I say I want to export all the frames. Frames per second is going to decide speed of your animation. What you saw currently was 15 frames per second. It was a bit fast, so you can always go ahead and say, okay, I only want 10 frames per second or 5 frames per second, depending on how slow or fast you want the animation to be. How do you want your visual style to be? You can export it in hidden lines, shaded with edges, or you want realistic or rendering. So it's going to render 300 frames and export that as um, the walkthrough. So if you're going to do a rendered walkthrough export, make sure that you have enough time and correct hardware that supports this kind of uh, export. For now, I'm going to do a hidden line mode because that's the fastest and easiest and quickest. So let's go ahead and say OK. And it's going to ask where you want to save it. And I'm going to say OK. I want to do a sample walkthrough on my desktop and I'm going to save it. There we are. So it has already exported. Let's go to the desktop and have a look. So now you have a sample walkthrough.avi file created. When you double click on that, you will be able to see this walkthrough here. I'm going to close this for now and come back to my Revit. So, so far, when we're walking on the path that we created for the walkthrough, we're walking at the same eye elevation. How do we create a walkthrough that goes up or down? Let's go back to the ground floor level and come here. Under 3D view, let's create a new walkthrough. If you notice on your options bar, you have an offset value of 1.75 meters set by default. You click on any point here, that particular point is going to be 1.75 meters higher from the ground floor, which is a default eye elevation. If I go ahead and change this to 3 meters and click here, and I finish the walkthrough, I'm going to edit this walkthrough and open it. Let's adjust this a little bit to see how we, where we are. And I'm going to go back to 1. And I'm going to show you what happened. So I'm going to open this walkthrough and play it. So if you see, you're walking at 1.75 meters and gradually going up towards 3 meters next keyframe. So when you want to climb a staircase, there are two ways you can do this. So let's go back to the ground floor level. Now one thing I need to know the values of my offset for my eye elevation if I want to set them up from the very beginning. But in case of staircases, I don't like to do it in this way. I like to do it slightly in a different way and that's the way I'm going to share it with you. So let's go ahead and create a walkthrough. 
and without adjusting the offset because it's very hard to know what offset values I really want to put that's going to look correct when I'm climbing a staircase. So I'm going to go and start my paths from over here. I'm going to add quite a lot of um, frames over here and complete my finished walkthrough from here. I'm going to go back, edit my walkthrough and I'm going to adjust my cameras. So I'm going to look over here. The next keyframe is going to look towards here. Next keyframe seems to be looking there. And slowly I'm going to look towards the way that I'm going to climb. Next frame. Next frame. Okay. And maybe at the end, I want to look back. So I've set up my camera. I've set up the path. But I want to set up the path now in elevation view or a 3D view. So I'm going to go under my 3D view. Go to the visibility graphics. Switch off all except the stairs and under walkthrough 3 I'm going to create a show camera option. So now I see my pass and I'm going to edit that by using the controls of pass. So I see that okay I'm going to walk towards this building and from this particular point I want to start going up. So I can really set this visually instead of with values that are very difficult to find. And I'm going to adjust this in a more graphical way. So make sure that you're using the correct keyframes. Uh oh, this one. You can always go back to the ground floor, edit the walkthrough, make sure your path is selected, adjust them over here. You can come back, open your walkthrough, make sure that it's looking correct. I'm going to frame number one. Under edit walkthrough, I'll go into the next frame, next keyframe, and I'm going to adjust this a little bit further. Next keyframe, next keyframe. And it looks like as if I'm climbing up the stairs. So let me <clears throat> go back to the frame number one, edit walkthrough, and try to play it. So we are walking up the stairs. And going up in the first floor. I hope today's episode was interesting for you. In the next one, we are going to talk about how to take a Revit drawing and export that into CAD as DWG. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.